So um, before I embark on my journey to pharmacy or the pathway to pharmacy, I would like to to you to share that uh, recently I made it into the list of the world top two percent most cited researcher in the world for pharmacy. I want to tell my personal story about how this is achieved. So I am the youngest of a family of eight. Mom is a housewife, while dad was a policeman. Not the usual policeman that you see on the street, but the one who would go deep into the jungle to hunt for the communists for a couple of months, only to suddenly appear at our dinner table. Only mom knew his schedule. Sometimes mom would fry a few eggs, uh, and which we would carefully share by breaking into small pieces to be consumed with rice, and that would be our main meal. Kids in school would often laugh at me because they knew for certain the content of my lunchbox. Rice, egg, sprinkled with some soya sauce. Mom said it's okay, as long as you are healthy. If we are fortunate, she would find a can or two of sardines in Dad's backpack following his jungle operation. And similarly, we would divide the small fish into eight portions, enough for six kids and two adults, and that would be a luxury for all of us. Um, school was very far from home, and often we had to wake up at 5.30 a.m. just to be on time. As a result, I, with certain condition, I hated school, and you would not be surprised if I don't do well in my studies. So, often mom had to sign my report card with a big F written in red across many of the subjects. I knew she blamed herself for all of our shortcomings, for my failure, and for being poor. Nevertheless, mom wanted us to study very well. Dad even mentioned that he had nothing to give to us except for our school education upon his death. But this wasn't so for my family, for my siblings and I. One day, an incident occurred that drastically changed my attitude towards my studies. Mom, who was very tired on that day, failed to wake us up on time. As a result, we were awakened by the rumbling of the police truck waiting just outside the house, waiting to charter us and the other children from the police camp to our respective schools. Ha! Huh? What's wrong with missing just one day of school? I was elated at the idea of missing, that, uh, missing school on that day. However, the increased rumbling of the police truck continued. Curious, I peeped out of the window and saw Mark's silhouette against the giant truck. She was on her knees, begging the truck driver with a full load of children to wait for her kids, who were still sleeping in the house. She was trying to explain that it was her fault she failed to wake us up and she didn't do a good job. Despite being uneducated, mom wanted a different fate for all of us. That really gave me a paradigm shift in my thinking. I wanted to excel from that time. I was a changed person and I was empowered. From that day onwards, I vowed to put my studies as the top priority in my life. And I advanced from being the worst three in the school to the first three in the school, and then to the top three in the state, and was offered a scholarship by the government. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I just experienced is a paradigm shift in the thinking, where a person tries to get out from the old habit to a new habit, and usually, usually it is of higher level due to a certain crisis, and um, will try to get out of the comfort zone. So the government sponsored me to study my A-levels and after that I went on to study uh, my bachelor degree in pharmacy in the UK under scholarship. I also received scholarships to study my master's 
and also scholarship to study my PhD, without which I can't even be a pharmacist in the first place. And I advanced to becoming a lecturer, and then a senior lecturer, got promoted to an associate professor, and then a full professor, and become the school head of pharmacy in Monash recently. I think uh, this slide is not working. Okay, um, so mom's dedication, never mind. This is a wrong slide, but it's okay. Mom's uh, determination, patience, uh, resilience to bounce back, compassionate nature, loving, a problem solver, having grit to move on, being adaptable, having attention to detail, being a multitasker, are all the, the right condition and ingredients to being a good pharmacist. So this leads to a paradigm shift in also thinking about how drugs are being administered to patients in a different way so that patients can benefit. And it, it opened up new avenue for new therapies. So for example, in the field of precision medicine, where you need to administer the right drug to the right patient in the right dose at the right time. So I, maybe I will share my findings um, to illustrate this fact. So most drug doses are currently given based on body weight. And I was not happy with that because clinical trials are mostly being conducted in the Western countries. And the Westerners, different in terms of the body weight and also height uh, to the Asians. But yet we receive drug doses uh, that is recommended for the Westerners. So we wouldn't think of buying shoes in a single size. So why should we be satisfied with a one-size-fits-all medicine? And genetic differences can affect how a person metabolize or excrete the drug out from the body very much. Therefore, it makes sense to, to look at the gene of, a, uh, of an individual. And this is uh, part of my study where I found that in a, for a certain type of gene, the slow there are 30% Asians who are slow metabolizers for certain drugs. This means that they cannot remove the drug from their body as easily or as efficiently as the Caucasian. So there is a huge gap here, but yet we are still receiving a one-size-fits-all amount of dose, amount of drug. So this means that toxicity can occur or side effect can occur in Asians. And I believe that this uh, needs a lot of further studies for Asians to benefit from this. And another study of mine is about the relationship between gene and personality. Uh, humans are generally divided into two types of personality, type A and type B. Type A is the competitive, can't wait sort of person, you know, just like me. And the type B are more relaxed and more patient and easygoing. So in my study, I tried to associate gene with personality. So what I did is I yanked out six pieces of my hair and then uh, cut off the portion that has the sharp end that contained a lot of DNA and then uh, kept them in an envelope. And after that, I extracted using some enzymes and then tried to amplify the gene using a machine called polymerase chain reaction. So I found that the fast metabolizer tend to be of personality type A, whereas the slow tend to be of personality type B. So this shows that gene not only affect the drug doses, but also your personality. So be careful about dropping your hair on the carpet or on the chair now, because I can know your personality. So as a pharmacist, besides being an educationist and also a researcher, you can also work in the community pharmacy to serve the community uh, in the industry for drug formulation and drug design, drug development, in the hospital to serve the hospital patients, and also in sales and marketing. And this list is not exhaustive, there are more. 
So, just a few pearls of wisdom from me to be successful in your career. Um, I think a lot of students need to stop complaining <laughs> and, and start to don't, and don't compare. Don't look at what others have. Instead, look at what you have. You are so blessed. You have so many things. So look at what you have instead. And then use failures as a stepping stone to success. There are no failures actually. Just you haven't reached it there yet. You, if you keep on trying, you will reach it there. You will reach that. The other one is the attitude of continuous improvement. Always ask, is there a better way? Whenever you do anything in your life, is there a better way? Is there a better way? So this will make you improve. And always be better than you were yesterday. So that means you compare with yourself. Never give up. You will reach there if you keep on doing small, small little habits that is aligned to your long-term goal. Life is a lifelong learning. I believe that you will only stop learning when you expire. No one laughs, but it's fine. <laughs> Be thankful to the people around you because you are here because of so many conditions that have helped you to be where you are now. You know, the support from your parents, the support from your teachers and um, siblings and friends. Be curious. The world, there's so many things to explore in the world. So many new ideas that you can uh, explore. Teamwork is very important. It's very difficult to be successful if you were to work alone. So take advantage of everyone's unique abilities and work together as a team. Give yourself a pat on your back. No one will pat for you. Sometimes your parents do. Um, and celebrate small successes. Even if they are small, just celebrate. This will keep your energy going. Otherwise, you'll feel exhausted. Love yourself. Be compassionate to yourself. Be kind to yourself. It's okay if you make errors. Forgive yourself and move on. Everyone makes error. Take baby steps towards the long-term goal. So, if you keep on doing the same thing towards the small, small things, it's fine. But as long as it's aligned to where you want to be in future, then you will reach there eventually. And the other one is to monitor your self-talk. Be careful about what you say to yourself in your head. And if you find any negativities, quickly take them out and put in your positive thinking. So before I end, I would like to say that I really want to see uh, precision medicine or drugs being dosed based on the gene coming to us in maybe 10 to 20 years time because I think Asians need that. And appreciate what you have currently so that you can uh, move forward and you don't need to wait for a paradigm shift or for something to happen in your life. You can do it now. With that, I thank you.